to learn this topic is uh, very interesting which is related to IQ directly is how are we planning to develop uh, cognitive potential of our kids in our source um, and then um, have to begin with definition first of what cognitive potential is. Uh, it's not that straightforward uh, at the first glance, but if we are talking broadly, uh, IQ includes ability to operate uh, with information uh, through speech, spatial thinking, uh, learning ability. Uh, that means like our cognitive abilities are, are the way we consume information and do something with it and adjust our behavior uh, in order to cope with uh, challenges given given uh, real source and so I wanted to briefly discuss why we are small like human beings uh, slightly smaller than the rest of the normal population of, of course depends what kind of definitions we choose but like in, in, in a way people can uh, think, speak, learn, um, they are unbeatable in all dimensions. So what happened? What happened? What made us smart? Well, the first thing is uh, human beings are weak in terms of natural weapons. Uh, no fangs, paws, no horns. Uh, muscles are not that big and mass of the body also is relatively small uh, a human being is walking with uh, the stomach uh, in, in, in forward direction what means all vulnerable thing is right in front of them so what, they are exposed to danger straight away and also they don't have eyes on the back so they don't see what happened behind them, they can't turn the head 180 degrees. So all that is like with this setup, it's quite complicated to survive. And if human being is alone somewhere in the wild, no many chances uh, they are going to survive. So with all that, they needed to be alive and they needed to solve those problems and have answers to the questions reality gives them. So what they decided to do is uh, to cooperate with each other uh, and make sure a uh, few of them um, act better than one to one. So that gave that gave uh, that that created a problem, which has to be solved uh, in order to survive. So what I mean is, uh, they needed to be together. They needed to stay in group, and they needed to develop skills, which helped them to be a group, which helped them to uh, solve problems together and uh, spread some uh, responsibilities across different members of the group uh, or, uh, or even uh, or, or, or better than that they needed to give tasks to the members of the group which can do them the best right so so with all that uh, first 
a human being starts uh, gathering in the groups and then those groups start to compete with each other and now we've got group selection so that group which was having better communication which was having better empathy uh, traits uh, and loads of other uh, factors developed they have got an advantage in survival and a classic example is Neanderthals and uh, Homo sapiens or Homo sapiens is uh, like some scientists are saying Neanderthals have ex extincted because it was hard for them to uh, to spread it, it was hard for them to split responsibility and outsource particular tasks to the members of the community who was doing them the best because the, every Neanderthal was the hunter and it, it, they, they could do everything themselves that means they needed to have plenty of skills but they couldn't get perfect in some particular skill whether in uh, homo sapiens society some people were for example doing knives better than others and because the high level of empathy and the high level of trust let them do that so as a group uh, homo sapiens had better knives than neanderthals and hence they they have won also they once they've got better tools once they've got better something else for example i, I don't know what could it be like kitchenware or uh, the way they handle fire uh, they save precious time producing it and they can spend more time uh, gathering in a group talking telling stories to, to each other exercise their social skills and then their group is having an advantage so in my uh, view this it looks reasonable uh, and also because uh, uh, early humans and now, especially now, uh, human beings have very long childhood and uh, survival of the group and propagation into the time depends how well kids, uh, how well upbringing of kids is happening. The more time you've got to spend with your kids, that means the the advantage of your group to survive and we in other groups who don't spend that much time with their kids uh, and with outsourcing I, it, it's, it's just uh, easier to achieve then uh, we have to admit that like if we've got a lifespan which is becoming longer and longer then young adults male and females males and females they have to have some mechanisms to choose proper genes uh, of their partner and and human, human homo sapiens uh, evolved in the way that when they are young and they are uh, it's hard to understand how they are going to end up in a social hierarchy when they become older. They've got traits which allow opposite sex to select best of them. And one of those one of those mechanisms are for example speech ability. So if person is speaking well, they've got a large vocabulary and uh, they are very attractive to other to other uh, gender that's very interesting because like once you can speak more one, once you can better articulate your thoughts that means when you become older you could better lead your group to the to the success or to the victory of uh, cross group uh, uh, competition 
and and in this case, like uh, earlier, people uh, developed their, their kids and their speech abilities uh, better for them to propagate their genes in the future generations. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the, the there is a big there is a big difference uh, culturally between the Neanderthals and uh, Homo sapiens, as well the Homo, Homo sapiens is, did have more advanced culture. First of all, their their graves look look uh, much more fancier. Uh, uh, what means they they had uh, bigger rituals than Neanderthals. Like I'm not saying the Anthropos didn't have their graves, but like the pools in the graves is always the same. Like pools of the embryo and uh, not many flowers or not the flowers, but some other things which they believe supposed to follow them on an on an uh, afterlife. For example, weapons or, or some other gear or whatever. On the other hand, Homo sapiens they they, they had that a lot. Like they've got. Uh, and, and jewellery and, and, and weapons and, and tools and everything was buried with the, the member of the community what means they believe that person is going to live after 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 death and that's also is very important concept uh, to understand uh, because once you start thinking about that your brain is developing because you are create plenty of virtual realities in which uh, people do live after they die, uh, and that, that, that also supposed to bring to brain development. Right, so with all this saying, that means that like human beings evolved to have our own abstract thinking, and this was crucial thing because why? Well, first of all, environment is constantly changing, so we have to adapt. But we can't create just uh, some strategy and apply it to everything because, like, it's going to fail now and then, and the failure could be far, uh, you know, could be fatal. Uh, so we needed to create some way of of thinking in which we could just have an abstract understanding of things. And the way we can extract features of the situation, and from that we could make an assumption what's going to happen next, and if a prediction is good enough, then we survive. We've got, uh, we've got uh, an advantage. So with all that, also uh, in the earlier humans and our uh, direct ancestors. Group behavior uh, gave us next task. So first, we needed to understand emotions of other people, like in order to not get bitten, or, or, or you know, in order to do things better. And uh, so, with that, we needed to read mimics. We needed to understand the tones of the voice. We needed to understand the pools and all that. Uh, also. Uh, we needed to understand gesticulation, uh, well, like, look, the thing is, in order for our brain to be fully developed, we needed to solve a lot of tasks, very different tasks. Uh, so, what struck me when I was just starting thinking about that is, well, if I can understand mathematics and physics, what kind of conditions supposed to be in earlier humans reach without writing, without proper information technology, could push our brain to be to be evolved to that stage of like literally understanding such complicated things. So what I was thinking is like the world supposed to be much more complicated than we have now, and people supposed to have uh, supposed to have much more complicated structures in their head uh, in order to be on the edge uh, to get to be that developed, right? 
And also, uh, another another important thing struck me was uh, when people uh, have invented agriculture, uh, a brain shrunk like 10, 15 percent. So what kind of smart they supposed to be beforehand, like when they were hunters, like they, they needed literally talk to the animals uh, or to understand their language or something in order to be that smart and to be developed. Right, so, so, okay, so uh, conditions are, people are living in a group, they have a long lifespan and they, and they have to survive and they're weak. So what they have to do? They have to work with information. Most of the time, 99.999%, they're supposed to work with information. They have to first uh, gather information about their group. They have to gather information about animals and their behavior. They have to gather information about plants and, and, and different weather conditions and all that. Then they have to gather information about uh, and they have to pass that information to future generation and also it has to be abstract enough in order not to touch a particular year and, uh, and the particular conditions in order to uh, uh, give ability to survive the future generations and i think great part of that has that has been taken by religion but like that's not at all whatever so what we've got is information technologies what the way we've got like abstraction they, they needed to come, they needed to understand this is many, this is this is this is not that many, they, they, like this and that. Like mathematical abstractions are crucial for that. Because look, ma what, what mathematics is, is it's just that an abstraction. No, I'm not I'm not saying about one plus two, but like we are talking about that x x cubed plus x uh, squared and equals zero and then find x's and y's and so on and so forth. That's the real mathematics, not just one plus one. The role of muscles is rubbing. Like it's not rubbing completely and women turn now are attracted and naturally muscle men with their wide shoulders and, 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 and big arms and all that. But like again, look, they were attracted to that millions of years. That intellect um, appeared relatively recently. So and also intellectual strength is much more important because uh, if you have a quite developed muscle, uh, quite developed muscles, but you are not smart enough to communicate, that means you can't outsource important tasks because not everywhere you need muscles. Like you don't need muscles to 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 care about kids, and you can't say that's not important because kids are uh, kids are our future. You know, we have to care about them properly. So for that, we have to have a level of empathy to other women in order uh, to have a connection with them and in order to make sure our kids are going to be well cared after. Also, if somebody does know how to do any other thing, like how to read uh, weather conditions or predict any new behavior or I don't know uh, be a good pathfinder like most of the time it has nothing to do with muscles but like for the group it's crucial in terms of survival also and one of the crucial thing is like it, it, it's like how your speech apparatus is developed and how you can deliver your thoughts and how can you uh, how can you rule and how can you make sure the entire group or most of it is happy with you? So you, you see, it's obvious that the muscles are muscles, but like the, the intellect is intellect. And you can't really say that like they are, they are uh, like they're crossing uh, each other's ways, but like, you know. So, uh, in order to understand how to develop our kids, we have to understand and uh, how they are developed through the uh, their childhood, through the lifespan, and so on and so forth. So, of course, when child is just born, or when it, uh, they are in the womb, there uh, there are conditions 
we were supposed to be there was supposed to be met uh, and because of that we have to take an action of so for example if the woman when she's pregnant and giving birth and then breastfeeding she has to get a proper nutrition based on the yeah she has to properly eat and also she has to be in a safe space uh, to give our newborn safe environment so our newborn is not uh, fed up with the cortisol uh, and not screaming all the time and feeling bad about the environment and get scared and all that so that's understood the first year kid is always right and uh, the priority is to keep them smiling uh, be around them and make sure they start start getting into this world as a safe space you can read a lot about that uh, in Maslow's books um, I like his ideas about that like in order to explore a child a child has to be uh, has to feel safe first of all uh, then then from uh, yeah and having said that I'm not saying we don't have a, we, we, we we are not avoiding complete uh, cocoons environment we introduce some cold uh, some heat some wet so something but like we do not stress a lot we just see as soon as child starts like like infant starts screaming crying we just like we just back off like okay that's enough but we have to introduce those stimuli uh, all the time in order for the brain to get developed to different stimulus like it's not always a comfortable uh, and top of the of the like like Top, top of the pleasure no like we have to always push a bit to the limit to the limit of uh, to the limit of that they can handle uh, and and every day little bit by little bit we, if we introduce those uh, conditions a bit by a bit uh, by the time they're turning one year old they can handle a lot like not always put the clothing on them sometimes like you know get them naked uh and, uh spin around and all of that and like you see you see yourself they're getting stronger and stronger and once they turn one year old and uh, they or two year old they become toddlers well it depends on the what i'm doing and that's like interesting example so i i, I take that by the arm and leg and pull it up or just like by the leg and pull, pull them up pull them Pull them up and then at first first they scared they, they they scared they start screaming and just put them back straight away uh let them go for like 10 minutes i just get used to be learning again and then pull them up again like uh well i've noticed like uh, one my, my younger one started to suck his fingers and like uh holding the straps i see he's afraid but like he's just st uh, no, the, 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 the muscles I can I, I can see you know, I can feel in the body like the body was uh, uh, like you know in a way he's afraid you, you, can, you can you can read body language but like I was doing that every day every day those little exercises a bit by bit bit, bit by bit but and, and, and in, in a month two months I see he doesn't care that much he doesn't like it I wouldn't I wouldn't say he likes it like first he was crying and screaming then he just didn't like it and he was stressed but didn't like it and then in like three months and this is an example you have to you have to uh, try out on your kids yourself but like uh, in for example in three months he loves it and he crawls to me and, and, and start, starts pushing like okay let's let's go and do it that way and the thing is what happens actually like first stimuli in his brain saying like this is dangerous behavior this is dangerous dangerous position i can't handle it this is scary but then he learns like nothing really bad happened it's new the condition is new the information is new a feeling body is very unusual but it's not killing it's not even painful it's just scary and and he learns to live with us 
But once he's had it, once he learns, look, it was 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, and nothing bad happens. I didn't hear my hand. I didn't do anything else. And I'm fine. So why wouldn't we try and go for it? But that's father's, father's thing, I think, because uh, women, women, like for women, it's very hard to do, like, like pull the kids with their legs and, you know, that why? So that, that, that's going to be a separate thing, how to handle your toddlers and how to, how to make sure they are expanding their potential while they are little. Then, uh, uh, kids becoming uh, older, they like uh, preschool and school and as a, as a game, it's a very important part of their behavior, uh, of their development, the game itself. And I think this is like, the, the, this is during our feature of the behavior. What happens with the game? Uh, kids do be do give up their pride a lot and they learn how to handle themselves within the society so they, they just group and within the group they interact particular uh, sense uh, plenty of times they they pretend they're doing something they chase each other they trying to um, create a model of the situation and within that they behave in different ways and they learn how to handle you know, how to handle particular situation within the group so why that is important same as it's important for a newborn to distinguish where different colors are so they see red it's red and they learn the different colors different faces faces do have features all of that, all of that, exactly the same thing is happening with the social behavior, uh, but the um, features are different. So instead of eyes, they select, okay, this is not fair behavior. This is not, uh, this is not respectful, uh, respectful enough. This is arrogant and all that. And they learn all those little traits. Also, they learn a lot of their place in the hierarchy. They learn about um, uh, what's important in hierarchy, for example, like, my favorite example is when uh, kids, some kids can run fast or play instruments or anything like that. So a set of skills making them higher in the hierarchy and others uh, feeling shame or, you know, other negative emotions in order to, and, and they have to do something in order to keep up and all that. And, and all that is giving them a game. And more games better for the development of neural network of your child right uh safe environment i i, I think that's well understood please like well, and again i always reference you to a master's book books because he has described pretty well that like if you don't feel safe you've got an anxiety and an anxiety is the thing like you think and think and think and think or it's like not letting you to explore it's not letting an anxiety, it's not letting you to to just forget about everything and be open to the world. And that's the duty of the parents to create a safe environment, which is letting your children to explore. Uh, yeah, ch children do have some genetically uh, embedded mechanisms in them, like they're afraid of darkness and that's no wonder because of course, of course, they were afraid of some some predators and all that. Uh, so, how are we developing? Every every part of that is going to be a separate topic, but like briefly, speech and language. Why it's important? Well, first of all, it's the oldest thing they have, uh, probably probably not that old as body language because some people people needed to read body language before they invented speech and then and, and wolves and dogs and, and all, like pack mammals they're supposed to read body language so I, I think body language is not uh, now older than that but speech is kind of very important so what happened when like they were sitting near the fire and telling stories to each other how we develop our speech abilities first 
，呃，会吵，会吵，吵，吵得一落，会冇咁多人吵，会冇咁多人吵啦，伊，啊，伊 words 咁嘅代 ，we explain what that word means and what another means and so on. Then, well, because we live in bilingual environment and we have to learn two languages in school, that's very useful because、uh, in our particular case, we have to learn like we learn Russian, we learn some others, like we learn、uh, Belarus,、uh, well, Belarus. We know how to say that in English, and and with all that, because、uh, Belarusian language is kind of in between Polish and Russian. Polish language is also much easier for us to learn, and kids are learning Polish very quickly. And I'm saying that is like this is the same language group, and we could find similarities between them, and what means for us three languages very easy to learn because like we've got two already, like by by the the preset we've got two languages, then we learn third one. So once we are we are operating.、Uh, Languages of our group quite well. We start learning、uh, languages from、uh, different group. For example, like that because English is international language. Now we force our children to learn English. What? So once English is getting learned, then we introduce German because it's a bit more complicated. But again, here I'm not sure which one to take first. Um, what's better, like from complicated to easy one, or vice versa? That's the matter of discussion, but like because we better know English than German, we introduce English first.、Uh, that's another、uh, language group, and、uh, and also it's important to create a context in which、uh, language is learned better. So, for example, I'll tell you what that、uh, you have to learn a vocabulary, and there are different ways of learning that. The first one is、uh, you just have a list of words and you read them and you try to remember them. The second is, for example, we've got a list of words. We open a YouTube video, and our ch- children do it next. They listen how a native speaker is pronouncing the word. It's written there. They repeat, and they have to write it down. So what happens? Their neural network. Uh, or the part of the brain which is responsible for the for the word getting stimuli from ear、uh, from the、uh, from their eyes because they see the picture of the subject or they see the scene of the person is running or walking whatever so they see、uh, an image and we so we. We employ their visual cortex, hearing cortex. We employ their eyes. We employ their hands. We employ their ears. And what means is the the word itself is having much more informational pressure than just reading the word as as, as letters and having internal dialogue、uh, in the head pronouncing their word. So somebody is pronouncing that for us. So in this case, the neural network of the child is getting developed just faster, only because the amount of information per word is much higher. Of course, better than they are placed in the context of the of the country where people are speaking、uh, that language. Of course, like but because we can't do that, like quarantine and all that, we are、uh, we are doing what we can, and that's how we develop our. Uh, speech and language abilities, and that's how I believe uh, uh, we develop the neural networks, like brains and, and all that.、Uh, next thing, ah、uh, yeah,、uh, also we're forcing them to sing songs and、uh, learn poetry of the of the chosen language. Which is also giving uh, you know, uh, absolutely different、uh, neural network develop development, and because we, I believe, designed to pass information in verses, because I, I don't know how to explain. I just believe that, and I think science 
after they clear life, you know, find some papers and all that, and then get back to the music and probably gives you the idea why I think so. All right, okay. Uh, um, we did have some problems with uh, speech uh, abilities in terms of like kids couldn't pronounce particular sounds. So what we've done and uh, put a YouTube area uh, error for that wasn't probably available. But now what we've done is in a very early age when we detect that our kids can't pronounce this or that letter or sound or whatever. We simply open YouTube video where they provide an exercise for that sound. So what happens? Uh, we just consistently, five minutes a day, every day, doing so, uh, such exercises. And what happens? And I, I didn't understand back then when I introduced that technique. But like I understand now that first... Uh, it, the, the brain is growing connections for that particular sound. That's first. Second, muscles of the mouth, tongue, and uh, tongue and uh, uh, voice apparatus, they are getting adjusted to that sound. The more we repeat, more we iterate those exercises, better kit starts to pronounce in particular letters. And also, that uh, is impacting other letters as well. Because it, it, it's everything is it, everything is working as a whole, and once you, you you say those sounds better, automatically you say other sounds better as well. Please try out if your kid has got some spe speech abilities. They are the only rule of thumb here is a consistency. Like don't get them stressed too much. Five minutes a day, ten minutes a day. Just every day. Don't skip lessons. Well, <clears throat> mathematics and why I love it. Because it gives us ability to look at the world through the prism of abstraction. Uh, so, so f first, first thing first. It's the same as uh, reading and speech. You you have to you have to start from very simple stuff like one plus one, two plus two, and those concepts will lead you to much more complicated stuff. But why this is such an uh, important subject? Well, first, uh, it gives you understanding that complicated parts are just some of simpler things. So, and once you understand that, you can you can simply just like embrace entire world and say, okay, if I could understand such complicated concept, which is built on a, uh, which is built from little bricks of simpler things like one plus one and so on, that means nothing is complicated enough for me to be not understood. That's a very important thing to me. And 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 levels of abstractions could be such. A, at such a high dimension, they could understand what Big Bang is and like where universe is heading to and what kind of and the number of galaxies, especially like you know this like they launched Hubble and the Hubble uh, told us just the number of galaxies we have expected is nothing compared to what is shown, uh, and and we we understood that like you you know mathematics is giving us ability okay that's ten in like. 300 uh, power or whatever. Uh, and, and how is developing our IQ and our brain? Well, first, we have to keep in our brain very large number of uh, reason consequence relationship. And when we try to prove particular theory, we have to always remember and get back to, okay, that was that and this it was there, that means this. And the number of those connections is just like very large. So in order to prove something, you have to be already smart and there have to be a lot of neural connections which are responsible for particular, uh, 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 for example, uh, like 
you know, the cosine, sine, and tangent. You have to understand the concept behind that, and you have to understand uh, like squares and cubes and all that. And 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 uh, based on those abstractions, you can like generate your own theorems and prove them. And and that's like the the amount of neurons involved supposed to be large for that. And I think like when you complete those tasks. Like real task, you always grow your neurons. Like you grow your muscles and you grow your neurons. As simple as that. Um, another thing is very important in mathematics is just like you, most of the time you just can't solve problems with brute force. What that means, like brute force is you've got you've got some way of uh, solving quadratic equation for example but this particular one if you have a look at that from different angle will be solved in much more simpler and much more sophisticated way and what that requires from you it, it requires an ability to try to look at the problem from one usual way for example you add particular number to every uh, member of the equation or you split entire equation in two or you just group those things uh, th those members of equation in different groups and, and put them on the other side of equation and you, you know there are plenty of tricks and more you learn them more like more tools you've got in your tool belt again better your IQ is and you can extrapolate that knowledge into your real life experience and that's why that's why math is 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 the best in training that like is math and you know physics and all that like because you you are trying to understand not understandable things really you are trying to understand things your mind is not designed to understand like and in this case in this case, you just exercise in the way, uh, uh, exercise, exercise in the way, uh, no human beings could do uh, in earlier ages. Simply because, like, you can't hand, you can't, you couldn't handle uh, such com complicated concepts without paper and pen or without books. And now you can read a book, you can understand the concept or was created by other people and you can try to understand them try to figure out how they got to that conclusion and based on that you've got a massive shortcut to the next stage so i love it okay uh, my favorite one it's music and why i think music is one of the key features of the humans their, their development as i said before Prehistoric humans needed to communicate a lot uh, across uh, 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 between themselves, and the best, and, and they needed to have built-in hardware which is helping them to pass much more information uh, and uh, pass it in a compressed way, in very you know, like in terms of computer science it could be zipped as tight as possible and, and as much information as possible so why music is here well uh we can't really separate music from like instrumental music from singing i think it's all together because it's uh, it's working with the same part of the brain uh, so and why is it, it's my favorite one? Uh, because it's got the evolutionary component, we are biased towards music and we love music. It, it helps it helps to develop the brain faster than without it. Uh, the complexity of the ear is fascinating to me. And let me explain that in a few, a few words. So what we've got here is we've got a membrane which is like first of all we've got this structure spiral structure here where sound is getting into the tube here and uh, when it's traveling uh, along 
different cells here or different parts of base membrane they are designed to detect different frequencies but what is more interesting in here is we can adjust our hearing ability to particular tone voluntarily of course if we are trying our ear to be so precise so in other words uh, this cell is listening uh, vibration of the membrane and those cells they can pull it here or pull it back and when it pulls it back it pull, pulls it here uh, the membrane is becoming more tight and it can listen to particular for example bass or highs more precisely and that's what the people are calling when they for example they play a violin they uh, they distinguish between notes they they can tune violin because they hear and when they hear different notes they, they literally deliberately pull those by, by by those cells they pull the membrane just here in order to hear that particular sound look this this is complicated thing and when we hear that uh that that, that means like we we develop another hundred million of neurons to to manipulate the, those little cells uh, and, and that just struck me look if, if if such complicated structure could be could be uh, a slave for us and we've got hardware in our brain in order to, to treat it like like like, like a literally slave it just it just mind blowing so so then what we've got next along with hearing we've got connection to our speech apparatus because we have to sing we have to hear what we're singing we have to hear notes and how we sing and also we have to hear how other people are singing uh, that thing is directly connected to emotional effects emotional part of the brain because songs could be happy songs could be sad and why is that that is because we have to pass a lot of emotional information so when we think about a particular thing or particular situation we not only explaining what actually happened within that realm of time we explain how emotionally group reacts on that and how emotionally group supposed to react on such things for example when we are moaning about our dead we are not singing happy songs right and we are just pushing and inf passing information we're passing information that this is sad event we have to i don't know get get distracted by that and stop and you know and on the other hand when people are celebrating childbirth or they're celebrating marriage they're they, they usually singing a happy song from culture to culture it may vary but you know that's the thing behind it then fine motor skills for example if you play violin or piano or any other musical instrument you have to develop your hand movements which which are also connected to you the hearing part of the brain which is also connected to your other part of the muscle part of the brain and all of that is constantly just creating neurons a thousand by thousand by thousand and creating very large paths between them and once you build them they could be used for other tasks for example if you can play violin you can play it in i don't know bigger um, some, uh, I don't know, some other instruments and then you can hear notes and you can play piano and you can play any other instrument quite easily so yeah and, and, and of course that's going to raise your IQ level of course because the number of neurons you're growing there is just incredible uh, and first and then second that's what your brain is designed for the brain is designed to listen to the music and create music that's what we were doing like most of us maybe some people some people couldn't sing or, or, or play music instruments they, they're supposed to be very good at some other things otherwise 
Um, so music, music is, is a big part of our development, and now our kids are uh, playing pianos and, and, and violins and, and so on and so forth, and singing and stuff like that. All right, sport. On the first glance, it could be seen as where IQ and where the sport is, but look, it's very important. The first is sport is giving adequate understanding of your place in the reality. Why? Simply because the results are tangible. Like you, whether you run ten or you don't, whether you can. Uh, whether you can lift up 100 kilos or not, whether you can hit the ball or not, it's just like uh, black or white, or white, and there's no in between. So, uh, what sports give you, apart, apart from other health benefits, it just gives you an understanding. First, if you don't work, you don't get results. As simple as that. In second, the results are there. You can't fake them. You can't really cheat or anything like that. Whether so, so, so results supposed to be real. Another thing is, it's intense brain boost by a high fitness level. How that is happening is because, for example, when you're running, your heart is pumping a lot and your vessels are becoming bigger, of course, because you have to drop the heat from your head. You have to. Uh, push much more blood through your brain and uh, brain is getting fed better Another thing what I've noticed while running is I think well, well two things first one is uh, recent research suggests that while we are running we along with the end of things we are getting and cannabinoids and those uh, substances similar to which marijuana contains and in my opinion why is that happening is because we are so overwhelmed with uh, different stimuli from different organs our uh, liver is, is, is telling us like it's, it's too hard our lungs uh, heart is pumping uh, legs are, uh, are tired and so on and so forth but uh, Evolutionary, we're supposed to solve complicated problems on the run. So, in order to achieve that, body is supposed to have some sort of hormone which is letting our brain to work better while we're running. Like, don't mind everything else and concentrate on the target. And what I have noticed is when I'm listening audiobooks while I'm running, I do remember them better. And I think that's because of the substances which are similar to, to uh, uh, marijuana ones. Uh, because because the, the brain is working better, the brain is uh, 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 it's, it's more open to senses, uh, it's more open to thinking abilities. And when you're running, you're supposed to like target, for example, a prey and think how prey is going to behave and you in order to reach it, you're supposed to think and you're supposed to predict its behavior and you're supposed to be in the thing, you're supposed to be in the process. So I think that's another thing. <clears throat> so uh, uh, this, this is about simple running and simple uh, fitness thing. Another thing is like uh, hunting, most of the time, cross-culturally, it's a team game. So you have to pass signals, you have to read signals from your uh, hunting buddies. And this is also, I think, why that's happening while we're running. Uh, and also, look, we can't, we can't really spend 100% of time uh, for our fitness. Modern world is the world where we have to work with information a lot of the time. We have to stay at monitor and we have to like read and read and listen and read. So sport is the best way to turn off our monitors and make sure we're not getting rusty and our bodies are sound. Uh, so
Right. Another thing about sport that I wanted to say is we are growing a lot of Europe's while we're doing it. Well, why? Because first, we learn a lot about our body. If we are not moving, we don't know how do we how we are going to feel when we are tired, how we are going to feel when we are trying to strike or kick, how we are going to feel when somebody is trying to kick us, somebody is our opponent. We are not learning if we are not doing sports how to read body movements, how to read an alert when somebody is just getting ready to punch and all that all that as long as we are not getting hit in our head and destroy our neurons all that is adding uh, brain capacity so more we spend time training especially when we try and intellectual games I, and I think from Jiu Jitsu or Muay Thai as long as I'm not hitting the head uh, those things are highly intellectual because you have to think how to fight a taller opponent how to fight when their clothing is without, uh, without clothing you have to think how to get away from a particular thing uh, you always have to think and thinking is look it, that's the way of development uh, I'm not sure about swimming that much, but look now swimming also you can buy the water resistant MP3s and headphones and uh, uh, listen to audiobooks or some podcasts while you're swimming. That's also fascinating in my opinion. Like when I was swimming, I didn't have that luxury. Lucky we've got that. So we're getting back to the conclusion of this speech and uh, what we are concluding is all creative activities are developing neural connections so doesn't matter what you do you are as long as you are not filling up your neural network with the trash of I don't know, some rubbish information, as long as you are developing particular motor skills, particular speech skills, as long as you are working on something, you are developing your ability. And uh, that's your responsibility, of course, to have a healthy limit of, in order not to kill yourself with that. But, for example, for our children, if they want to draw, we let them, if they want to color something, we let them, because again, they are developing little uh, uh, motor hand movement when they are coloring something. The more they color, the better their hand is working. And it's also proven thing that their hand control is directly connected from your brain to your speech abilities. The more they draw, the better they speak. Also, they can go in school, some classes where they, I don't know, make toys or make uh, little kitchenware from clay very interesting thing and they learn how to do that and they learn how they build it look uh, my daughter went there and she comes back and start the, uh, playing with the clay and I was absolutely amazed how can she what kind of things can she do with that but when I've spoken to her teacher she says all of that consists of little operations. So first you have to learn how to make little balls. Then you have to learn how to make, uh, you, you know, those uh, long things. And then you learn how to assemble them together. And then you play those little tricks. And literally what she said, it was 20, 25, uh, 20, 25 uh, exercises they're doing and once they good at all of them they can do just about everything and i was amazed look even such complicated thing was broken down in uh, simpler tasks so that everything is like that drawing is like that you, you first you learn how to draw a circle then you 
and learn how to make triangles and then learn how to assemble that and then you have a face and then you move further and further and further as long as you caught your kid uh, being interested in something just promote that just give them the ability to explore in that direction yeah so what that means for us is just we have to make sure our kids is busy our kids are busy with some tasks which are just good for their development we're not forcing them but if i see they're doing something now good i just like trying to move their focus of their attention to something more productive and as soon as they uh, i see they get us inside there maybe as an amusement i can say okay you can play with the phone sometimes but like in order to play with the phone you have to learn another mind so that's well i i, I, I know i know that's blackmailing but like you know we have to we have to think about them now uh, in order to let them go when they're getting older uh, otherwise they come to us and say look you could force me to run but you didn't that's your fault so better i'll be guilty now than them uh, we have to think uh, that uh, children do need an activity that's their nature uh, well th th that's their nature the activity is their nature so all we have to do is just give them right activity uh, and also we have to we have to what we have to make sure they have an access to uh, other activities so if we think the music is developing their brain we have to give them ability to to uh, uh, to exercise the, the music so well we are in a very lucky condition here where we live because we've got music school and we've got fantastic uh, teachers who are teaching them violin piano and some other instruments we've got fantastic teachers who are teaching them to sing on professional level uh, and, and I think for for every parent they just have to understand they have to find a way they are kids are going to visit those teachers and they just have to be there also when like for example my daughter who's playing violin she is not always interested in playing the instrument because it's hard obviously so what i'm trying to cheat her is that i'm saying look just touch it just open it touch it when it touches like show me two notes and so she's showing two notes and what happens there the, her brain is starting fire, firing and she is okay those two notes are fine what is about third one fourth one would you not play that piece of music just quickly and then she does it and then i see she's interested for another five minutes or she wants to uh, or she wants for example i don't know if i play in the phone another stupid game and say look just quickly go through all your concerts five minutes and you will play no problem so and what you have to understand is just once they getting involved e even for them it's very hard to get out so once once she's starting touching violin for her like okay it's becoming interesting it's becoming interesting to get sounds of it and because of interesting i i can't really drag the violin out of her hands anymore so all i needed to do is just ask her to do a little bit of it and once she's starting yeah so that's that's what we have to understand the need for an activity uh, uh we have to just like fire a, a particular brain part in there uh, and, and and that's gonna be that's gonna be another big task how we are cheating our kids in order to in order their brain to be developed on the top level because look look why i see is that's one of the important conclusions here is uh world is changing and uh it, it, right okay so so people like 10 or 20 years ago people were afraid that the selection of human beings is going towards not very, very intellectual uh, members of society uh, 
However, these days it's drastically changed. So uh, lower intellect people, they will be struggling getting a job because the world is getting much more complex than it was 20 years ago. So it's absolutely crucial for our kids and, and us to make sure our children are going to be developed on the, or on the tip of their gifts and abilities. Otherwise, they are going to get in trouble. And further we go, I see a higher level go. Good news here is that we are not that much genetic, gen genetically different and all requires for us is just spend some time, create a system for development and follow the system. And once we do that, our kids are going to be okay. But we have to be consistent. We have to make sure we are developing IQ potential of our kids on the top of the thing. So that's that, that's the that's the main conclusion, and that's why I have started all that because I feel responsibility that if I'm not working hard enough and I'm not developing my children, they end up not very well. Uh, I foresee the world is going to be very complicated. And to survive and to understand what to do is going to be very complicated. This is this is my worry and this is my concern. And that's why that's why I'm trying to create a solid border between rubbish information and my children and make sure on the information which is going to develop their ability, their social skills, their what well, I mean their IQ obviously is going to get there. Like similar to sanitization or something. Right, that's it for today. Thank you for your attention. And the next time I'm planning to talk about responsibility, how to develop responsibility, what kind of uh, part of our brain is going to be responsible for that and what, what kind of little things are, what kind of little steps supposed to be taken in order to develop it.